Shalom, Shalom Overcomer. Hi, my name is Anna Johnson and I am your Overcomer Coach. And welcome to Tea Time with Anna, where you grab a cup of tea or coffee and join me as I answer some questions that have been submitted to me. Welcome to Tea Time with Anna. All right, this morning, before we jump in, uh, I'm going to give everybody a few minutes to jump in. I have a really great question that I'm going to be answering this morning. And I think while, we, while I wait, I'm going to pray. Father, Father, I thank you. I thank you for today. I thank you for each and every overcomer that is underneath the, the sound of my voice. Father, We I welcome you into this tea time. And Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit would reveal the answer to the question that is uh, going to be shared today, Father. I thank you, Father, and I praise you, and I give you the glory. In Yeshua's name, I pray and thank thee. Hallelujah and amen. All right, well, welcome to Tea Time. Welcome, welcome. Today's question is, it is, okay, do I have permission just to drop a lot of truth today? Because, you know, that's what I'm called to do. And so this question is going to, it has a sharp response to it in a holy way, of course. So let me just read the question. The question says, Anna, after many years of betrayal in marriage from my husband, I have filed for divorce. I'm looking for a group of women I can connect with online. What are your suggestions? Now, this is a loaded question. It's a loaded question. And I don't want to just answer the you know, what group to be in. I want to get to the root of the, the important, the important things of this question. So let me read it one more time. Anna, after many years of betrayal and marriage from my husband, I have filed for divorce. Okay. We're not going to go there about divorce and whether we should divorce or whether we should. Um, but this is the point. This woman that's, that submitted this question has in, she's endured a great deal of betrayal, right? Um, it probably infidelity, probably most likely infidelity, maybe even a, potentially a narcissist that she is that she had been dealing with, because uh, she says many years of marriage. Um, she's filed for divorce, so at this point she's decided that you know I can no longer go on in this pattern. But the 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 other side of this is is that she there's a positive aspect. She's looking for a group. She's looking for a group of women that she can connect with online and she wants to know what my suggestions are. Well, before I tell, say what my suggestions are, I'm going to say what I don't suggest. And what I don't suggest is joining a group where the focal point is on pain versus healing. Where the focal point is on injustice versus being an overcomer versus being versus moving forward in that healing. And a lot of times we'll see groups online that say uh, trauma group or betrayal group or women who've suffered betrayal. Pay attention to how those groups are labeled. Okay, the label will tell you something, but that's not a that's a first place to start. It's not the only place. To look at though. So if you see a group where the emphasis is on the pain, like the betrayal. Now it'd be different if it says overcoming betrayal, right? So then that means the emphasis is on how do I get past the betrayal or healing, heal, you know, uh, you know, finding healing after betrayal. But do you see how betrayal is at the end of those, uh, at the end of those statements? Do you see how that word is at the end? We do not want to identify uh, with pain. We do not want to identify with pain. We do not want to identify with being a victim. We want to identify with being a victor. And we are a victor in and through Yeshua. And so, you know, we got to be careful. So those are the groups that you do not want to join are, are groups that the emphasis is on the pain. The emphasis is on the, um, you know, on the injustice, you want to join a group where the emphasis is on becoming or walking in that which you desire. So if you desire healing, don't join a group that focuses on uh, illness or pain. Join a group that focuses on getting on the other side of that. 
I hope that makes sense. So pay attention to the name. If it says, you know, women who are betrayed or betrayal group or even divorce group. No, like, because the person that it tells you a little bit about the person that set the group up uh, as to what their thinking is and where they're at where they're at, where they're at. If you notice when, with my groups, my, the groups that I do, and I'm granted, I listen to the father. I run these groups because of him, not because of me, but I listen to see what the spirit of God is saying. And what I'm learning is that the spirit of God is showing me like, no, there's the reason why I, you see overcoming everything is because God is calling us to identify with the finished and complete work of the cross. Of what Yeshua has done. He, that's what we identify with. We, these, we don't identify with these temporary afflictions. Now I'm not saying that we ignore them. But we don't identify with them. Our eye is always set on the promises of God. And on where he's calling us. Alright so the second part of this question, question is. Well let me go back. Okay so the other thing about why these groups are dangerous. Is, is that there's a thing called trauma bonding. And it's where people come together with a common pain and they start to bond and connect. What, where, you know, connection, human connection is a powerful thing. It is a mighty thing. But when you connect with someone that is wounded and they're, they're, they're not migrating towards healing, they're just sitting in that wounded place. You will find yourself being, your, your whole relationship will be connected to the trauma. And this is why when people are, uh, you know, when they have addiction and they, uh, you know, they cut off those old friends, those old people, places, and things. This is part of the reason why. Because there's an unholy, unhealthy bond. And in order for that person to move forward in the freedom they cannot be tied to old pa old people, places, and things. And so you you know do you when you're wounded, you do not want to connect. If you're if you're wrestling with bitterness and resentment and unforgiveness, which anyone that's betrayed, especially a woman, she's going to wrestle with that. So if you're wrestling with that, the last thing you want to do is connect with other people, have a a deep connection with other people, a deep emotional connection with other people that are wrestling with that as well. You, you um, let's say wrestle with that, but sitting in that, sitting in that, hopefully there's a wrestle to overcome. And then in those, in groups like that, you'll see a savior complex, you'll see codependency. So we have to be careful what groups we connect with. Um, so you want to connect with a group. I don't have a specific group to suggest for uh, this question, but I can say this. You want to connect with a group of women <clears throat> that are where you want to be, okay? Where you want to be or at least heading in that direction. That's where you want the connection. Now, if you're looking for to see if you are alone, and, it's, and so sometimes like seeing those groups of knowing like, wait a minute, like these are the things that happen to women that have been betrayed. These are, because a lot of times people feel alone and they feel like, uh, they're the only one that has had had this experience. Um, you don't want to necessarily connect with those 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 group people, but you may want to research some of that information. All right. So, long story short, let us not identify or grow or build from a place of pain, but from a place of victory. So, always join a group that is migrating towards the place that you desire to be, that healed place. That healed place where you no longer think like somebody that has um, endured betrayal, but you think like someone that is healed and that is whole and that is, you know, victorious. That's the groups that you join. That is the groups that you join. So, in the, like I said, joining the wrong group will bring you into trauma bonding. It will bring you into running into, say, um, a lot of times in these groups, you'll see there are people that are codependent where they're needing someone to rescue them, or you'll see uh, people in there that are a savior and meaning they're there to, you know, save people. And we know who our Messiah is. There is only one and it's Yeshua HaMashiach. And, um, and then of course we are called to not be codependent, but to be totally dependent upon him, not codependent on people, not codependent on people.
And so the scripture today that I want to encourage uh, in relation to this question is Isaiah 41, 10. And it says, I have chosen you and have not cast you away. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Glory, hallelujah. Before we go looking to any group for connection and for feeling better, let us first remember who has chosen us. Let us first remember who is with us. Let us first remember who our God is. And, you know, before you join a group to feel better, make sure that you know who, who, who really is the healer, who really is most important. Turn to God first and foremost, and then make your connection secondary to that. I hope that makes sense. I know that's kind of a roundabout way of me answering the question, uh, but these are important foundational things that we need to do. You know, a lot of times we run in the flesh trying to feel better, trying to fix things, and we think, let me go join this group. And we do need to join groups, and we do need to connect, but I would encourage everyone to, to build a firm foundation in their mindset before running off connecting with anyone. When we don't have a strong foundation in our mindset, then we are often going to be um, misled in la due to lack of understanding, and we might connect with the betra a betrayal trauma group. That right there is a loaded group name, betrayal trauma group. Well, well, you know, what are these women talking about in the betrayal trauma group? Are they talking about, uh, you know, how you know how they're healing, how they're overcoming, or are they talking about what their enemy has done to them? Oh, I say enemy. Forgive me, Father. <laughs> what? Uh, what the person that has hurt them has done to them. Uh, what are they talking about? What kind of connections are they making? And are they having a narcissistic wound? Are they having a narcissistic wound where their focal point is on what they've suffered, what they've endured versus focusing on getting on the other side? See, this woman here who was in this marriage for years and was betrayed, uh, you know, it's time to move forward. It's time to move forward. And the enemy loves to waste our time. He loves to waste our time, which leads me to another scripture. Uh, and so pain, you know, a lot of betrayal will, it will take, it will put you in a headlock and it will, it will really hold you captive for a while, especially in marriage, especially when you've, you know, you've married someone, you fully trusted that person, and then they go and do the unimaginable, the unspeakable, Right. But I want to encourage you to not invest any more time in, in pain and invest your time and your energy in healing. And it doesn't mean that the pain will not speak to you. The pain will speak to you. But then you speak to the pain and you cry out to your father and you ask him to heal your wounds. And then you do something in faith using grace to run the race, right? You do something in faith to move forward. And that might, that very well could be connecting to a healing community, a healing community. So be careful of these groups because there's a lot of trauma bonding going on. There's a lot of books written from a, from a painful place, not a victorious place, right? Um, and I say a painful place, but what I mean by that is we have to see past the pain and see the victory. Hallelujah. And you know, it reminds me of Yeshua. Imagine the pain that he endured on the cross. But, and he sits from a place of victory. He doesn't think, we don't see him ruminating about the betrayal. We don't see him ruminating about the steps that he went through. What we see him say is that he is, he is risen. And he has made all, and he makes all things new, right? And so that's the that's the mindset we want to have. That's the mindset we can uh, rise up from from the ashes, right? And in through Yeshua. So uh, Joel chapter two twenty five, and this is a word for somebody. He says, "So I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten, that that betrayal's eaten, you know." The, craw the crawling locust, the consuming locust, and the chewing locust, my great army which I have sent, um, sent among you, you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you. 
And my people shall never be put to shame. Then you shall know that I am the, in the midst of Israel. I am the Lord your God, and there is no other. My people shall never be put to shame. Hallelujah. So, I know this is a word. I know this is a word uh, out of uh, a Joel for the, the nation of Israel. But we get to see the nature of our Father in and through this scripture. And, I, and, and what he's showing us is that even in betrayal, betrayal is very much like a locust. Um, you know, a consuming locust. Where someone has been married or in a relationship with somebody, maybe all of their life. Some people have been betrayed by their own parents, right? And they've been in a relationship all their life. And then all of a sudden they realize that the person that they loved and trusted has been very unfaithful in so many ways. And what's even worse is when it's been consistent. You know, when it's, when it's not sporadic. Like they've consistently done these things and and in love and maybe in lack of wisdom you've been you've endured in in seasons that you were called to walk away but be of good of good courage for father is the redeemer of time and he is able to restore he is able to restore and i would encourage you if you're listening to this and you've you've endured betrayal of any sort i would encourage you to first remember who your redeemer is and who is your healer? And who who is your judge? Who is the one that provides justice and righteousness? And and uh, and look to him first. And then yes, connect with people on the journey heading in the right direction. First, okay, listen. This is this is really important. One, connect with a group that's moving because any that has movement, any. Any group that doesn't have movement where they're not progressing towards a righteous and holy place is stagnant. It is a dead place that can be full of disease. Uh, and when I say disease, I, I'm getting these visuals in my head. But, you know, it's just like water that, that, that's not fresh, not, that it's not moving. There, or blood that doesn't move. It's going to be diseased. So look for a group that has movement in the right direction. In the right direction is that group is the momentum towards healing and change of mindset and change of lifestyle and and you know putting the past in the rearview in the rearview mirror like you're not even looking back and you're moving forward in healing that is the group that you want to be connected with glory hallelujah all right and so that is it for today's question on tea time but i did want to share a few things with you all you know, um, Father has really shown me the, the power of connection and the power of uh, his children being connected, being connected. And so I wanted to let you all know, becoming January 1st, I will be starting a 365 consecutive days of overcoming community. This is a two level community. So talking about like, okay, what type of group do I want to be connected to? Well, this group right here is it's overcomers. It's overcomers. And remember, being an overcomer doesn't mean the absence of challenges. It means the movement in the midst of challenges. Wow, that's a word right there, isn't it? So being an overcomer doesn't mean the absence of challenges. It means the movement in the midst of challenges. And if everybody takes their pulse, you will see you, you have challenges because to be alive is to have a challenge, right? Every, every day there's something that we will have to cast down and, you know, every, you know, we're supposed to be uh, holding every thought captive and bringing those thoughts under submission of the word of God. If we're not wrestling every day, if we're not take, doing that purification process, even within our minds, we're, um, we're not overcoming. We're not overcoming. So 365 consecutive days uh, community. It's a community where we will connect and I will be showing up on, on, on Facebook on Facebook in this private group. It is a paid group. And the reason why it's not free is because we need to make a commitment. We need to make a commitment. And if we don't put any commitment into it, we won't show up. We won't show up. And so it's a paid community. And then there's another level that goes outside of the Facebook community. And that is, a, a, it's, it's the next level. And that's where there will be mentorship that I'll be providing in a vault. It'll be like a learning and e-course vault. There will be lives where you actually get to connect with, connect with other believers live in a Zoom, a Zoom call with me. Uh, so I will be sharing those informations, but I wanted you guys to think about it. 
those details, I'll be sharing those details. I want you guys to think about it and I want you to start thinking like, what groups do I need to invest in and connect with? Listen, if you're not investing, you're not going to connect. We all know this. We all know this. So we have to invest so that we will connect, that we will be intentional. Uh, another thing is, is that maybe you're, maybe you're not ready <laughs> for 365 consecutive days. Like I am dedicating the year of 2024 to the Lord on a more intentional level. I'm doing that and I'm calling other overcomers to come with me uh, on a more intentional level. Of course, every day belongs to the Lord. But there's something about being accountable to a group of people that puts even more pressure on you to show up and to to be your best, to be your best. And so I hope that you guys will consider joining me for the for a whole year, a whole year of Overcoming. I mean, can you just imagine what we're going to look like after the end of uh, 2024? What we're going to look like, how we're going to think. Wow, could be a, a mighty year of breakthrough, a mighty year of breakthrough. And if you're worried about time, you know, with the with the level one group, it's going to be 15 minutes. It's going to be 15 minutes a day of investment because it's the small, consistent, faithful steps of the righteous that will availeth much. So we need to be, we're going to take those workable steps and we're going to build upon them and it's going to snowball into a, a mighty, mighty change and transformation in our lives. God willing, right? But if you're not ready for that, you're like, Anna, I'm just not there. If you're not ready for that, we do have, I will, I do have an overcomer conference call that I do twice a month and you're able to join that community. I'll put the links in here in a little bit for that community. And like tonight, I'm doing an overcomer conference call. And really what I do is I'm led by the Lord. I let the Lord tell me what I'm going to speak about uh, on that Tuesday night. It's, to, it's usually Tuesday nights at seven central standard time. And we I go live on a zoom, zoom call with other overcomers that have joined the community and your information's put in a vault. Uh, I say your information, the meetings are put in the vault. So you get, you have a library of all different things I've talked about throughout the overcomer, uh, conference calls. And tonight I'm talking about uh, putting, mastering the minors, mastering the minors. And what father's been speaking to me about here in the past week is that we have to, as overcomers, master the minors that we walk away from the basics and we, we seeking what we call more wisdom. And there's nothing wrong with layering our learning, but we have to continually always ma be working on mastering our minors. And those minors are the simple foundational things that we forget about. Uh, the minors are, you, you know, the basics, the fundamental things like prayer and getting into his presence and reading his word and fellowship. And we need to master those things because those are the foundational things. And it is meditating on the revelatory knowledge of our need for Yeshua and how he has made us righteous and that he is our righteousness and that, yes, we have grace and yes, he has given us mercy. And yes, we are overcomers by the blood of the lamb and the testimony of our faith. These are what people call the minors in the sense is that, you know, these are the, the simplicity thing. They're the simplicity of the word, the simplicity of our faith, and yet we're not mastering. We're like, oh yeah, I got that. Now I need to go to higher learning. That's what a lot of times people think. And so we study things about, you know, the temple. We study things about just different Hebraic things. And then we fall away from the simplicity of what we, what we need to be masters of. We need to be masters of getting into his presence. We need to be masters of prayer. We need to be masters of reading his word. We need to be masters of meditating on his word. We need to be masters at pulling in, uh, humbling ourselves before the Father. We need to be masters at knocking down every wicked imagination. These are the minors. These are the minors. And so the enemy really hopes that we will, you know, get, you know, get carried off by thinking we're going to higher thinking and then we fail to build on those foundational, to stay in the foundational things. Hallelujah. One of the visuals I get is like somebody that, plays basketball and you know they stop they stop doing the basics they stop running the drills because they're you know they're like okay i know the drills i run them for maybe a year or two now i'm gonna just do i'm gonna do so i'm gonna invest time in other things 
or a gymnast who fails to do the, the basic things that they've learned before. Listen, guys, we do spiritual and physical exercises. You know, we do the things in the spiritual, and the, those spiritual things should give birth to things in the natural, in the, in, you know, in the physical realm. So we really need to master on these minors. And that's what I'm going to be doing. Some of the things I'm going to be doing in the 365 consecutive days of overcoming that starts January 1st. And matter of fact, I'll give you guys a peek at, do y'all want a peek at what's going to be in there? I'll give you a peek. I'm just going to let you give you a little peek. I've already started writing it out. And, uh, the first portion, I've broken it up into 12, like focal points for the 365 days. And guess where we're starting, guys? We're going to start with identity. Identity, because that is foundational. So our, our, you know, understanding the identity of our Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Understanding our identity in Him. Um, and then we're going to then shift and, and start working on our focus. But before we can focus, we got to know who we are. We have to and must know who He is. If we don't know who He is, then we won't know who we are. And if we don't know who we are, we won't know who other people are. And, you know, that's why we live in such a world of confusion, right? So let me know in the comments whether you're interested in joining the 365 consecutive days of overcoming or whether you're interested in becoming an overcomer conference attendee, a member to that community. Let me know. Uh, one of the benefits of being in the mentorship, the 365 mentorship, is that you don't have to be on Facebook. So in that community, it's going to be a vault community and set up like an e-course in some ways uh, where you're actually able to go in to the membership site and you'll be able to see everything that's been in there. Because what I'll do is I'll pull the things from Facebook will be in there, but you, but those who do the mentorship program will have an extra additional layer in the vault. Um, that people that just invest in the Facebook will not. So let me know what you're interested in in the comments. It has been wonderful spending time with you all today. Go ahead and have an overcomer day. And do me a favor. Please like this. Share it with someone. And, you know, because you know that there are people out there that are connecting with the wrong people. And they're looking for healing. But all they're finding is more pain. So let us share, 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 and share. All right, Overcomer. Have an Overcomer day. Shalom.